please continue to stand for our scripture reading, which is from Mark chapter 18, verses 20, verse 20. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Amen. Okay. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to... Hold on. Dear Heavenly Father, we come together with grateful hearts, thanking you for the gift of family and the joy of gathering in your name bless our time together weaving the threads of love and unity that bind us as a family may our shared moments be filled with laughter understanding and a deep sense of your presence grant us the wisdom to appreciate each member's uniqueness and the strength to support one another through life's challenges as we gather let us let your grace surround us, fostering a spirit of compassion, forgiveness, and genuine connection. Guide our conversations and actions, Lord, so that they reflect your love and bring glory to your name. May this family and bond grow stronger with every shared moment, creating lasting memories that testify to your goodness. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, please, please have a seat.
Okay, I, I want to say good morning too. Jeremiah, Jeremiah said it to everyone earlier. But I, wanna, I just want to say one thing to the church. Uh, we've been meeting here, I don't, I don't know how many years, it's over 30 years, maybe closer to 40. And the church, you guys have supported us with a place to meet. And you've supported us with allowing us to use your, your church van. And you've given us money. And I want to say thank you to that. Uh, number one is we have a lot of boys come out of this church that have been, that made Eagle. That is important. That's, a, that's something you can be extremely proud about. Everybody don't get Eagle. Everybody don't make it. But we have a, we have a number of boys. You can, you can look downstairs on the wall. You will see how many boys we got Eagle. And everybody don't do it. I mean, a lot of boys go through scouting and just and don't ever finish it up. That's the finishing. But uh, I'm also here to say I want to welcome all the visitors. If we have any, not you guys, if we have any more visitors, can you please, can you please stand? Okay, I don't, I don't see any. But I do see some. I see a whole bunch of visitors over here. Uh, can your scouts please stand? I want to, I'd like to get the church to see you all, to see you. We got Boy Scouts over there and we got Cub Scouts over there. So, and we got some people that's been working with these guys for a long time. Uh, we got some leaders over there. They don't have to give their time to these boys, but they, they give it freely. And it's, uh, it's, it's to help them, it's to help, help the community, help the United States, really. Because <laughs> a lot of the boys that come out of here, especially the Eagles and the ones that don't make Eagle, they come out better citizens. So if you guys you want to say something, I'll give you the opportunity now. Mr. Weisbeck, you want to say Oh, I got it, I got it. Sir, do you want me to say something? <laughs> A community because scouting is part of the community and this community I can tell you stories over the 30 40 years I've been a leader here a troop started in 88 but we had Cub Scouts here since I don't know I started in 85 and it was before that and uh, uh, I could tell you stories about boys who were would have never met one another they're from totally different schools different backgrounds but they formed a friendship and there's several of these guys now that are in their 40s and early 50s even who are friends with one another because they met at this troop in scouting. And they do things together and they do things with their families together and it's just a heartwarming thing to see. Uh, some of those boys did make Eagle, but they made friends and they made commitments to learning how to live as a good citizen and they learned how to be leaders. A lot of them may not be political leaders or whatever, but you can see that they are leaders in their, in their work. Maybe they're not a manager, but they still lead teams. You can see the change in these boys from the time that they come in until they get older and, and leave us. Uh, I had several boys came very close to getting eagled last year, very close, just, just didn't quite push themselves hard enough. They didn't, not lack of encouragement, but to get ego, they have to do it themselves. Okay, this is a, a program where with the boys learn, we guide. The boys have ambition, we help encourage it. Okay, we don't push them. It's not something they have to do. It's something they want to do. And so when you get an Eagle Scout, you know that boy wanted to be an Eagle Scout and he worked hard for it. So uh, I'd like to thank all my leaders. Orban Terry's been with us since, I don't know, 2000, earlier 2000s. 
Mike Bro, you all know, he's a member of the church. He's been with us for a number of years. We got Charles, who's been a Cub Scout leader here for a number of years. Uh, Miss Kim Byers, who uh, son just is our latest eagle, and she's been very active with our troops. She even got her wood badge. If you see him with these neckerchiefs and knots, that means you took on additional leader training to get your wood badge. So she got her wood badge just recently. We want to congratulate her. We have, in Boy Scouts, there's troops all over the place, and they're organized by district. We're the Mattapanai District, which is uh, King George, Spotsylvania, Fredericksburg, and staff, and uh, Spotsylvania, and Fredericksburg, and King George, and Caroline. Okay, and then there's the council, which we're part of the Cap National Capillary Council. In the district, you have three key people, and one of those key people is the commissioner of the district, and we have our co district commissioner here, Miss Wendy Latella. She, she also, just in the last two years, got her uh, Silver Beaver Award, which is kind of like an adult getting their Eagle Scout. So congratulations to her. And of course, you all know Tim. Tim's been with us since we started the Boy Scout troop, and Thurman and I turned over the Cub Scouts to Tim. And Tim's been doing that. I know we started the Boy Scout troop in 88, and Tim's been doing Cub Scouts since 1988. And he also did Boy Scouts with his wife. His son was in Boy Scouts and got his eagle. So we owe a lot to Tim. The recognition is not deserved, but I, I just, I've been doing this since I was that tall. <laughs> so I, I have no choice. I've been, I've been in love with scouting ever since then. So I, I just wanted to give back a little bit. And a lot of times when you work with a lot of these boys, some of them, they can, they can make you wonder if you're doing the right thing. <laughs> but when you see one of them come back and you see one of them go to college and get his master's degree and, and get Eagle and all that, it makes it all worthwhile. And I want to thank you guys for that. Because a lot of, these, a lot of this stuff, we couldn't do it without you. We couldn't do it without the, without the families, without the church and without the church families. So I want to thank you for that. It's, I mean, the money that we, that we get is well spent. Because when you, when you look at, see these boys come back, and we got a lot of them to come back, and a lot of them to go into college, and a lot, and a lot of that stuff was because of some of the things that we helped them do. We didn't, we didn't get them to do it all, but we helped. We were there to help. Okay, so uh, I'm going to let Jeremiah take over. Oh, okay. I'm going to read the um, announcements, and you can follow along in your program. To God be the glory. Dear Shallow uh, church family. This message is sent in the spirit of gratitude for your prayers, cards, and messages of condolences during the illness and death of my mother. Lynetta Harris. Lynetta Harris immigrated to England, UK in 1962 and lived a full blessed life. Lynetta Harris passed away peacefully in her home on December 24th, 2023. I am grateful to God that I was able to travel on multiple trips to spend time and care for her prior to her passing and also attend her funeral services. Proverbs chapter 11 verses, verse 25 says, a generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. Shiloh family, thank you for your refreshing love. Great, great is thy faithfulness. Jerry and Doretta Stevenson. Super Bowl Sunday is today. Join us in the multi-purpose room for the games, refreshments, and a great time. February is Heart Health Awareness Month. This well, the wellness ministry of the wellness ministry of has designated today 
Heart Health Awareness Day. Immediately following the service, CPR training in training on the use of the defibrillators will be held in room 106. We are also seeking volunteers to conduct blood pressure screenings on a monthly basis. In addition, we are compiling a list of medically trained persons to include doctors, nurses, practitioners, and ENTs to assist our congregation if needed. We would also, we would also invite these individuals to partner with our ministry to pr present seminars. We will also, we will place a sign sign up sheet in the vestibule. Walker Auxiliary Club members will meet on Monday, February twelfth, twenty twenty four, at seven p.m. by telephone call. We are accepting new members. If you are need. If you need more information, please call Sister Anna Bro, Acting President. Memorial service for Sister Erlene Rose will be held on Monday, February 12th, 2024 at L.A.L. Bennett and Son Family Funeral Home, 200 Butter Butternuts Drive, beginning, beginning at 11 a.m. Please keep Trustee Vaughn Nelson and Deacon Deacon Dennis Webster in these th in your thoughts and prayers. Usher meeting will be held will not be held today. Black History Month presentation. After the morning service on February 18th, there will be a presentation for Black History Month. It will focus on Shallow Old Sites leadership during the Frederick Fredericksburg sit-ins. Old site members Gay t Todd. Hmm? Okay. <laughs> who sat? Who sat in? Will share how the protests were planned and executed, and the role playing the strategy from sign ma making to songs, from fear to strength. We must never forget what our local freedom writers did for us. We will invite any persons who sat in in Fredericksburg in 1960 to attend and be recognized. Q&A will follow. Light refreshments will be served. Reaching out to others. Please continue to keep all those who have lost loved ones in your thoughts and prayers. Please also continue to pray for the sick shut in and those who are less fortunate than you. Let's keep each other in our prayers. Now is the time of the program where we uh, give back a little bit to God. Um, time for, uh, for offering, ushers.
will help you to bear. I'm so glad. Hey, hey, yes, I am. Show no love for way. I'm so glad. Hey, 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 yes, I am. Show no love for way. In the precious name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. The storm is cast. 
Say amen. amen. Give the choir some love. Uh, the song says, if you open up your heart, he's available. Uh, you got problems, I've got problems. Life is full of problems that, and many of those problems we cannot solve on our own. But the song says, if we open up. A lot of time we open up to the wrong folk. But if we open up to him, I said if we open up to him, what a difference that can make in our lives. Is that your testimony? It's important that we avail ourselves to him. He stands at the door knocking. He's available. The question is, are you? As I stand here today and as I listen to uh, what was going on earlier. It reminds me of an African proverb that says, if a person dies when they die, they've never truly lived. In other words, the works that you do ought to live on long after you're gone. We cannot be in this service without recognizing and remembering Brother Thurman Brooks. Uh, there have been a number of young men, as has been stated, who become Eagle Scouts because of Brother Thurman and others who have continued this work. And what a marvelous thing, because Eagle Scouts, they're, they're as rare as, high, as hen's teeth. 
very rare. And so you become an Eagle Scout, that, that says something. And we want to thank all of these leaders. Give them some love. Thank you, yeah, thank you for all that you do. Uh, this is the day again that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Got a lot going on today. Amen. But it's good to have something going on. Amen. Uh, come on. A lot of times we don't have anything going on. <laughs> Uh, but it's good to be in motion. It's good to, uh, to allow yourself to be a vessel, to be used to the glory of God. Yeah. Amen. Are you available? Amen. Are you available uh, to be used by God to make this world a better place? There's so many folk who, who live and thrive on making the world a not so pleasant place. We got enough of them. On that side, would you join the side of lifting up the name of Jesus and lifting up humanity? Would you do that? Amen. Enough negativity. We got enough haters. Amen. I wonder who will help me lift Jesus. There is a word. It comes to us from the Gospel of Mark. Chapter 2, verses 1 through 9, 2 through 9, 2 through 9, that's right. And we see it on the screen. Let us read it together and look and live as we look at God's love letter to us. That's what the Bible is, God's love letter to us. Amen. Y'all all right? Amen. Okay. All right. <laughs> Let us read together. And after six days, Jesus take it with him, Peter and James and John, and leadeth them up into a high mountain, apart by themselves, and he was transfigured before them. And his raiment became shining, exceeding white as snow, as no fuller on earth can white them. And there appeared unto them Elias with Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. And Peter answered and said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here, and let us make three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elias. For he wist not what to say, for they were so afraid. And there was a cloud that overshadowed them, and a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son, hear him. And suddenly, when they had looked around about, they saw no man any more save Jesus only with themselves. And as they came down from the mountain, he charged them that they should tell no man what things they had seen to the Son of Man were risen from the dead. The word of God for the people of God. Blessed be the name of our God. A key verse is verse 7. It says, Then a cloud appeared and covered them, and a voice came from the cloud. This is my son, whom I love. Listen to him. Listen to him. For the next little while, I want to share with us from the thought, listen to Jesus. Listen. Listen to Jesus. Our text today, brothers and sisters, is a continuation of the journey we've been on for the last several weeks. This is a journey, not a joyride. It's not merely meandering here and there with no design, no purpose, no rhyme or reason. Jesus is inviting you and me to travel with him as he retraces and revisits the early days of his earthly ministry. As a recap, brothers and sisters, we began, if you will recall, at the Jordan River. At the Jordan River experience, we see John the baptizer gathered there, and he's calling for repentance. Repentance means that you say, I'm sorry for what I've done. Everybody, you ought not be so big. You ought not be so boastful. You ought not be so bad that you can't say you're sorry. All of us mess up. You mess up, I mess up, your mama mess up, everybody messes up. But when you mess up, 
you ought to straighten up and start all over again. So Jesus says to those persons who are gathered at the Jordan River that God is a God of another chance. Lord, have mercy. You do know there are some folk who will cut you off for what you did way back yonder. I don't care what you do after that. They'll always remember what you did back then. And at the same time, they forget about what they're doing right now. But God is a God of another chance. And we're not here but without that chance that God has given us. He's given us another chance, another day to get it right. And when somebody gives you something, you ought to say thank you. And so these people gathered at the river had been traveling on the wrong road. They had been traveling down the road of selfishness. They had been traveling down the road of self-indulgence and thinking more highly of themselves than they should. But here at the river, uh, they are hearing a message that says that God is a God again of another chance. So John preaches that living a life of opulence, all that you can get and get all that you can and trinkets and stuff, the material, it has a place, but none of this can take the place of being in right relationship with both our fellow humans and our creator, almighty God, at the same time. Let me say that again. It's not enough for you to be in right relationship with your fellow humans, and you should be, but you ought to be in right relationship with God. They are not mutually exclusive. They are together. You really can't be in right relationship with God unless you're in right relationship with me. And I can't be in right relationship with God unless I'm in right relationship with you. I wish I had a witness. You see, see, you see, too many of us are consumed with the wrong things. Too many of us are consumed with uh, the material blessings that God can give us, but we don't thank God for the blessings. Amen. Or we might thank him immediately at first sight when we see the shiny things that God provides for us, but then we get amnesia and forget all about it is he that has made us and not we ourselves. See, living in a material-oriented world where people judge you as a success because of the trinkets you acquire is not the answer. Now, there's nothing wrong with having nice things. The problem stems from the fact that for some people, they don't just have nice things, but those nice things have them in a headlock, in an ever-ending chasing cycle of trying to get more and more. Yet, there's a word from the Holy Writ. There is a word from the Lord. Anybody interested? Amen. It says in Matthew 6, 19 and 21, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy, where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where the thieves cannot break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where the moth and the vermin and the termites do not destroy where the thieves can't break in, but store your true treasure in a place where it can never, ever be lost or stolen. John said to those gathered at the Jordan, and to us by extension, don't put your eggs in the wrong basket. Don't get caught up in what Madonna sang about years ago, being a part of a material world being a material girl or a material boy. There's more to life than stuff. There's more to life than stuff. Can I stop by your house for a minute? You got stuff in your closet you'll never use. Amen. How do I know? Because I got stuff in my closet that I'll never use. They got places like Goodwill. They got places where you can use those things to help somebody else. That ought to be our modus operandi. That ought to be our driving force. Who can I help? Who can I help to, to get to a better place like somebody help you? And somebody help me. And if you're truly thankful for the help that has been rendered to you, the pay that you give is to help somebody else. You're not where you are by yourself. 
You didn't get there solely of your own volition. Somebody prayed for you. Had you on their mind. Somebody took the time and prayed for you. So you ought to pay it forward. You ought to pay it forward. You ought to live a life like Thurman Brooks. He's gone on from us in the flesh. But his works continue. His works So they're out there on the banks. And so John told the people to repent, to turn from their wicked ways. Amen. Amen. And John's message is still apropos today. Amen. I said it's apropos. Amen. That means it's appropriate today for you and me. Amen. Amen. Sin is not just what you do. More often, sin is what you don't do. Amen. You don't help anybody. You don't give them an encouraging word. You're always messy, trying to stir up stuff, always setting fires and then hiding your hands. Come on now. That's not of God. Talking about folk behind their back. If you're man enough or woman enough, talk to them in their face. That's a coward. They can only say things. That's like that face dog that barks, but when the door is open. Y'all know about it. They get mighty quiet. They ain't got nothing to say. They ain't got nothing to say because that's what cowards do. Well, whatever you gain, whatever you gain in this world, all of it comes from the Lord. And whatever you gain in this world, material-wise, do know you can't take it with you. I've been to many funerals, but I've never seen a U-Haul traveling behind the hearse. Then Jesus shows up. I like that. Jesus just show up, won't he? He'll just show up. And when he shows up, he shows out. And he shows up right on time. He shows up on the banks of the Jordan. And he insists that John baptizes him. And, and when, when, when he gets baptized, God gets on heaven's intercom and announces, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Amen. I, see, some of us are consumed with trying to get the, uh, the A-OK, -okay, the thumbs up from folk who don't have a heaven or a hell to put you in. But as long as I got King Jesus, I said as long as I got King Jesus, as long as I got King Jesus, help me somebody, I don't need and after that, Jesus began recruiting his first disciples, uh, taking away them from their jobs as fishermen. Lord, have mercy. Jesus will sometimes fire you so he can hire you. Yeah. Jesus will sometimes close doors so he can open greater doors. Yeah. So sometimes it's not a loss, it's just a setup by the divine to take you to higher places. Yeah. And you got to trust the Lord on the journey that he carries you on. See, every, every no is not a no from the law. Right. Okay, all right. all right. I say this all the time, and somebody repeated it the other day. I've lived long enough that I'm glad that God didn't give me some of the things that I wanted. Yeah. I, I think that's your story, too. You wanted him so bad. You wanted her so bad. You wanted it so bad. But God closed that door and now you tell him, thank you for not giving me what I thought I wanted. You do know Father. Father knows best. This is my, well, my beloved son whom I'm well pleased in. After that, Jesus recruits those disciples and he takes them on a journey and he takes them from being fishermen for carp and catfish to be fishers of men, boys, and women and girls. And those disciples follow him. And the next stop is the continuing journey is to Peter's house. You remember that? Mm -hmm. Where he heals people from many diseases from sun up to sundown. He healed Peter's ailing mother-in-law of a fever which mitigated, if not mitigated, could have ended her life. And once she's healed, she got up and served others. I said once she was blessed, she became a blessing to somebody else. Have you been blessed? I, I, I am talking to you. Talk back to me. 
Have you been blessed? Are there some blessings that only God could have given you and only God has provided for you? And if God has done that, you're blessed. But when you're blessed, in response to that blessing, you ought to be a blessing to others. That's what Peter's mother-in-law did. She, she got up from her fever condition and she got up and went to the kitchen and started serving. And I hear her singing, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. When the Lord blesses you, you are, you are remanded and commanded to pay it forward and bless somebody else. The word spread far and wide about the miraculous healing power exhibited by Jesus. So the people lined up early in the morning to make an appointment with Dr. Jesus because they heard that he could make everything all right. And they went into Jesus' room and they found the bed already made with no Jesus in the room. They searched high and low and they hunted for Jesus, the text says, and the Bible says they found him in a solitary place. Every now and then, you got to turn down the noise. Every now and then, you need to go into your secret closet. Every now and then, you need to turn off everything else to turn and tune in to what the Lord has to say. Some of us listen to everybody but the Lord. And our our, our lives are indicative of that. Amen. Some of us are following the red-headed devil to the, to, the deep, into, to the deep blue sea, but we won't even go to church to hear a word from the Lord. Amen. 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 The word spread. The word spread about what Jesus has done, and, and Jesus healed this woman, and, and now there's room, no room for the people. They're just coming from every direction, and they searched high and low, and they hunted for Jesus, and they found him. Found him in a place you and I need to go. The text says in a solitary place. That's a place where you refuel. That's a place where you get renewal. That's a place where you go because the world and the people in the world can empty you. Amen. Because there are a lot of spiritual vampires out there whose mission is to suck the life out of you. Amen. And some of them even come and dare to sit in church. But the word of God tells us. The word of God tells us when God blesses you, your response to that blessing is to be a blessing for somebody else. But when they look for Jesus, they don't find him. But Jesus shows us a valuable lesson. I'm almost there. Jesus shows us that self-care is not a luxury. It's a necessity. Amen. You can't properly take care of other folk if you don't take care of you. Let me say that again for the people in the back. You can't really take care of other folk if you don't make sure you're properly taken care of. Amen. 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 And so you need to, you need to get your hair done. Amen. Amen. You need to get your nails done. Brothers too. Amen. She ain't gonna like the fact that you're trying to touch her and you got dirt under your fingernails. I'm just trying to help you. Is that right, lady? Oh, and I heard the back. Make sure you get those feet, too. You coming in there trying to be Mr. Smooth, and you cutting up the sheets like you got scissors in your hand. Not only get your nails done, but on a serious note, seek therapy. Amen. Seek therapy. A lot of times as African Americans, we think that therapy means you're crazy. Where you, without therapy, you are crazy. Is that right, Dr. Batts? Hey, oh, look, we're just going through COVID. And we lost some years that we'll never get back. It, it was a tough time. People lost loved ones and they couldn't even gather to have funerals properly for their loved ones. Uh, kids missed a whole lot out of school. That we'll, some of them would never, ever catch up. We lost a lot at the, during, these, during, that, during that time. And, and it's important, brothers and sisters, that we take care of ourselves. Right. Donna Summer said it this way, you work hard for the money. 
So get yourself some much deserved rest and relaxation. And every now and then, go get you a new outfit for your new attitude. You better learn. You better learn to take a break or you will have a breakdown. And now we get to our text today. <laughs> now, text today, Jesus goes up into a mountain. He goes up into a mountain to get closer to God. Again, sometimes you got to turn down the noise in order to hear the Lord clearly. Yeah. He does not go alone. See, sometimes you need your, your ace boons to travel with you. In this instance, he has Peter, James, and John. And when God blesses you, you are expected to bless others. And as you go higher, take somebody with you. It's right here in the text. Jesus didn't just go up into the mountain by himself. He took somebody with him. Oh, Lord, have mercy. You ought not be so selfish and narcissistic and self-centered that it's all about you. You ought to want somebody else to be blessed as well. So he takes Peter, James, and John with him, and by extension, he takes us. Bless his holy name. As you go higher, take somebody with you. The text begins by saying, six days later. Don't miss that. Six days later, which means this is the Sabbath day. And the Sabbath day is a day that we ought to keep it holy. Amen. Lord, have mercy. COVID ain't what it was. Is still around, uh, but you ought not use COVID as an excuse not to come to church. Right. Amen. 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 Uh, especially when I saw you at the mall. <laughs> I saw you at the ball game because I was there. I was sitting in the parking lot. I saw you at the ABC store. <laughs> I was, I was sitting in the parking lot. Somebody brought me a package, and I said, hallelujah. <laughs> as, they, as they reached the summit, the Bible says that Jesus' appearance changes. Even his clothes have undergone a change. Uh, in the world of science, this occurrence would be called a metamorphosis, a transformation. You see, when you give your life to the Lord, you ought not be what you used to be. You may not be all that you should be, but you ought not be what you once were. What a change has been wrought in my life since Jesus came into my heart. As believers, we should be in a constant state of change and a constant state of growth and development. We should be transformed into an improved and new creature to the point that people who see us recognize that there's something different about her. There's something different about him. But because a change has come over us, we're not what we should be, but we are also not what we used to be. That's called maturity. Amen? Amen. That's called growth. Amen? This transformation of Jesus is not done as a solo act, but Mark tells us that Moses shows up. Elijah shows up. And that's important. Remember, Moses and Elijah have died. But just because you close your eyes, you shouldn't just die. Okay. We just talked about Thurman Brooks, who's no longer with us physically, but he lives in these scouts. Your mama lives in you, your grandma lives in you, your granddaddy lives in you. They gone on, but they yet live because they live and they contributed to you becoming who you are. You didn't just wake up like that, Beyonce. God put people in your life to strategically help you to get to where you are. And your payback is to help somebody else. You can't be a Christian and a narcissist at the same time. Yeah. Amen. It can't just be all about you and what you want and having your way. Let the Lord have his way. Yes. 
Moses is there, Elijah is there. And some of you have lost mothers and fathers and they've gone on to the other side, but they yet live. Because they that die in the Lord still live. And every now and then you ought to be able to hear their voices. Not necessarily audibly, uh, that might cause you to go to Snowden. <laughs> but you ought to remember their teachings. You ought to remember their life lessons that they tried to present to you. Moses is gone, Elijah is gone, but yet they're still here. They're still here because you can still hear their voices speaking in your spirit. They're still here because their works continue. And when you die, you should not die. What do you mean, preacher? Well, it means that you and I should leave some markers that can help those who come after us so that they can navigate this uneven journey of life as best as they possibly can without having to do everything from scratch. You ought to live a life. You ought to live a life that helps people to get from point A to point B because you and I didn't get from point A to point B by ourselves. Somebody helped us. Somebody prayed for us. Somebody had us on their mind, took the time to pray for us. Then don't be so selfish that you don't do the same thing for someone else. Which means that I should leave some markers and you should leave some markers that can help those who come after us to navigate this uneven journey of life as best as they possibly can. Your, your parents may have gone on to the other side. Your teachers and mentors may have crossed over the bar, but we are not where we are without them. Amen? Amen. In ancient African thought, it's called Ubuntu, which means humanity to others. It means that I am because of you. I am because of people who've already crossed over. I'm not where I am. You're not where you are solely of your own volition. Somebody helped you. And, and your rent for them helping you to pay back is to help somebody else. And the real payback is to help folk who can't help you. Again, a lot of us help folk I'll scratch your back if you scratch mine. Well, you need to scratch somebody's back who don't have hands. You'll get that on the way home. Again, I remind each of us that we didn't get to where we are by ourselves. Somebody helped you, somebody prayed for you, had you on their mind, somebody spoke a word on your behalf so that you could get into that school, get that job, get that promotion, and so on. And true appreciation is shown in how many people you have helped. Amen. Amen. Don't tell me you love the Lord, heard your cry, and you hadn't helped the crooked crab get us, get a, uh, it go to where it needs to be. If you've been helped and you really appreciate being helped, the evidence ought to be that you are helping somebody else. And if you're not helping somebody else right now, I'm not saying hinder, we do that. But if you're not helping somebody, then you're not really appreciative for what others have done in your life. Am I making sense? Yes. True appreciation is shown in how many people have you helped as others have blessed you and me. We should then allow ourselves to be instruments of blessings in the lives of others. Jay-Z, you know him? Beyonce's husband. He had this quote, he said, I got rich and gave back. To me, that's a win-win. That, that simply says, because I'm blessed, I gotta pay it forward and reach back to get somebody else to be a blessing in their lives. If you cannot say that is the case for your life, you need to make a change right now before it's too late. The measure of a man's success, the measure of a woman's success is not what they acquire for themselves, but how many people have you helped? That's why my greatest hero in American history, I love Dr. King, he's second. My first great hero is Harriet Tubman. Harriet Tubman was a very short, diminutive woman. She was about yay high, but she was big, bigger than her physical stature. 
And, and when she was considered the property of other humans, what, what, what devilish and satanic thing that you think you can own human beings? Lord have mercy. What, what, what got in folks' mind to make them think they can own what God made? Lord have mercy. But she, didn't, she wasn't satisfied with things being the way they are. See, a whole lot of folks just complain, but they never do anything about the complaint. She saw a condition that was ungodly, inhumane, and demonic, because that's what slavery was. I don't care, I don't care what Ron DeSantis and those other fools say. Slavery was not a help to black folk. DeSantis and others can go into a hot place and jump into a hot lake. You make the interpretation. It didn't help my people. Amen. It hurt our people. But in the meantime, there was this diminutive, short woman by the name of Harriet Tubman who said, I'm just not going to take it sitting down. I'm going to do something about it. And, and, and she sought freedom not just for herself. But the record is she made 19 trips to reach other folk to bring them out of slavery and did not lose one on the Underground Railroad. And you know what her great lament was? I could have saved more if I could have only have convinced them that they were slaves. Now some folk were happy on Mr. Charlie's plantation. Then and now. Amen, lights. Uh, but Harriet Tubman made a difference. And if your life is going to matter, if all you're doing is breathing in and breathing out and you're not making a difference, you're just taking up space and maybe you need to move on so somebody who else can come and take your place to do something. She did something. She saw a problem and she didn't just say, oh, that's a problem and fold her arms. She, she brought a solution to the problem. What a life lesson for us. A whole lot of folks can complain but what solutions are you bringing to that complaint? So she helped others because she recognized it's not just about me. I, I wish we could get out of this spirit of selfishness, this narcissistic spirit that even pervades the church, where it's about me and what I want and my agenda, us four and no more. It ain't about you, boo. It ain't just about you. It ain't just about what you want is what the Lord's agenda is. And if the Lord doesn't want you to have it, you ought not want it. Amen. And if you want it still, it might be for the wrong reason. Amen. And so we, we learn from this text that God blesses us to be a blessing to someone else. So Moses is there on the mountain. Elijah's on there. Uh, he's, the, he's the victor of the battle at Mount Carmel. Moses is the lawgiver. They're dead, but they're not dead. They're dead, but their deeds go on and live on well after their physical lives come to an end. The transfiguration is the turning point for Jesus. It's the turning point for Jesus because from then on in his ministry, Jesus has been teaching and healing. Now he will begin his journey to Jerusalem where he would die for your sins and mine. Mm. It's not a, it doesn't sound like a good uh, area of the story, does it? It does not sound like a good place. He, he, he leaves this mountain, and he recognizes, I've got work to do. He leaves the mountain recognizing that this work is going to be painful because folk he healed are going to talk and turn against him. Folk he helped will be the very ones who will dig ditches for him. The people he assisted, you know that. That's the story of life, isn't it? Folk, you help. Sometimes the very ones at the front of the line trying to tear you down. Amen, Amen lights. Amen. Folk, you help. But sometimes turn their backs on you. Jesus is on his journey. He's on his journey to Calvary to die for your sins. To pay a debt that he didn't know and a debt that we could not pay. He goes to Calvary on your behalf and my behalf. And the transfiguration reaffirms Jesus' identity, reveals his glory, and he calls his disciples to listen 
to him. That's what God said in the text. Listen, listen. It's not enough to listen, but you got to listen to the right voices. January 6, 2021, at the behest of a president who lost but did not want to accept the loss, amen, people went to the Capitol and he told them it's going to be wild. Y'all remember that, right? And they stormed the Capitol and many of them had gov good government jobs that they lost. And, and they went there at the behest of a fool, a man who told them to go and didn't go himself. Is that right? And, and they lost those jobs, all, they lost their benefits, they lost all of that, listen carefully. They lost them because they listened to the wrong voices. It's not enough just to listen. You've got to listen to the right voices. The right voice is not going to tell you something wrong to do. Amen. Amen. Let me say that again. The right voices are not going to tell you to do something that is wrong and ungodly. Amen. Listen, I know you got to resist that because sometimes when folk do things to you, the natural temptation is to go in Chuck Norris mode. <laughs> Everybody was kung fu fighting. Come on, help me now. But you got to resist that. And, and I got to resist that because sometimes there's a part of me that says, uh, bring it. Amen. Don't just sing it. Bring it. That's a part of me. I, and the Lord is yet working with me. So you got to be careful how you roll up on me. Amen. I ain't no killer but don't push me. And I mean that from every fiber of my being, Shiloh. Every fiber of my being. If you don't know, now you know. But sometimes you got to put the switchblade down. Sometimes you got to put the Glock down. Sometimes you got to stop cussing. You know, you don't curse. You, you know, we curse. No, that ain't, that ain't right. You ain't saying it right. Sometimes you cuss. <laughs> Amen. And you may not do it with your lips, but you do it with your eyes and you do it in your head. I wish I had a few honest people in here. How do I know? Because sometimes I cuss with my eyes and not my lips. I just be still and hold my peace. As best I can, Lord have mercy, pray my strength in the Lord. God says to these three visitors with Jesus, listen, listen to him. If you're not listening to Jesus, if you're not following his instructions, you're going in the wrong direction. In order to really listen to Jesus, we must rid ourselves of the distracting noises that can take us out of character and put us in some unnecessary bad spots. And if we would be honest, all of us have gotten some bad advice from people, even those with good intentions. That's why we must listen, listen, listen to Jesus, because Jesus has already gone to where we're trying to get to. See, many people drown in the waters of life because they took lessons from people who don't know how to swim themselves. Let me say that again. Many people drown in the waters of life because they took lessons from people who didn't know how to swim in the first place. But Jesus, do you know him? It's God who comes down to show us the way. He's God in flesh appearing. Jesus is God in flesh appearing. Jesus is God incarnate. And through Jesus and through the Jesus event, we learn more about God. And I submit that in my theology, God even learns more about us through his son, Jesus. Amen. It's not enough. It's not enough to just be high and holy. We must also learn to be meek and lowly. 
Apparently Jesus checked all of the boxes. God then tells those on the mountain with Jesus, James, John, uh, and Peter, to listen, listen to him. Listen to him. The question is, and the, the fact is, who you listen to matters. Who you listen to makes a difference. You l shouldn't listen to trust just any old body. Because some folk have a hidden agenda. Amen. Because people will sometimes give you the wrong advice on purpose. That's right. Amen. Our enslaved African ancestors said in song that everybody talking about heaven ain't going there. You must be a mature spiritual in individual with insight so that people can't pull the wool over your eyes and who you listen to again matters. Over 900 people, 304 of them were children. This is a while back, but some of you remember went into the jungles of Jonestown, Guyana, and they were forced to drink the flavor aid that was laced with cyanide. They followed this man from Indiana, then to California, and then out into the jungles, and he was, he was stock crazy mad. His name was Jim Jones. And since then, this kind of trickery and treachery has been dubbed drinking the Kool-Aid. Amen. And there are folk today, even in church, who want you to drink their flavor of Kool-Aid. Oh, you're going to get that on the way home. You have to be careful of whose advice you receive. If people are telling you something wrong and you know that it's wrong, and you ought to listen to your gut and follow the word of God. I'm saying like I feel it. If someone is telling you to leave the church, someone telling you stop giving money to the church, then you might just be listening to the wrong people. Amen. The wrong people who are giving the wrong advice. But on the lofty peaks of that mount of transfiguration, God clearly says of Jesus and to us, listen to him. Don't listen necessarily to them. You hear what I said? Listen to him. And not necessarily them, especially if they're trying to tell you the wrong thing. See, when we listen to Jesus... We will love even our enemies. Amen. When we listen to Jesus, we will pray for those who despitefully use us. When we listen to Jesus, he will direct our paths and guide our footsteps. When we listen to Jesus, we become constructive rather than destructive. When we listen to Jesus, we can drive out darkness and enter into his marvelous light. How do I listen to Jesus? We we'll read his instructions. Dust that Bible off. Amen. Crack it open every once in a while and, and read God's love letter to you. Amen. And if you have problems understanding, that's why I'm here. Amen. I am the resident theologian here at this church. Amen. I don't know everything, but I know some things. Amen. And I can help you if you want to be helped. And you can help me if I want to be helped. But some folk have, have determined that they'll go to hell in a handbasket all by themselves. But he's available. The question is, will you listen? How do you listen to Jesus? Well, read his instructions, the owner's manual, the Bible, God's love letter to humanity. Listening matters. Just ask the Savior to help you, comfort, strengthen, and keep you. He is willing to aid you. He will carry you through. Shun evil companions, bad language disdain. God's name hold in reverence, nor take it in vain, but be thoughtful and honest, kind-hearted and true. Look ever to Jesus, and he will carry you through. To him that overcome it, God giveth a crown. Through faith we will conquer, though often cast down. He who is our Savior, our strength will renew. Look ever to Jesus. I said look ever to Jesus. And he will carry you through. Listen to Jesus. Not only listen to Jesus, imitate Jesus. It is not enough just to talk about what Jesus did, but true followers also do what Jesus did and listen to his voice and continue to do and imitate him at every hand. 
we listen to his words and we live by his words. And when we listen to Jesus, everything, everything will be all right. The other church stands open. The door of the church is open. He's trying to get your attention. He's been sending messages regularly, rapidly, and repeatedly. Sends messages that let us know that you're not going to be here forever. Amen. Amen. You have a birth date. You have a death date. Amen. Amen. It is appointed once that every human being, man and woman, should die. But after death, there's the judgment. And you can't make it over by yourself. No, no. Your, your good works alone, nor your good looks, that's not enough. You need to be in good relationship, right relationship with both God and your fellow man. Amen. And if you listen to him, I just believe. I just believe that this imperfect vessel with all of its mars and scars, but if you listen to Jesus, one of these days he's going to call your name. The trumpet is going to sound. And, and I don't know about you, but I, I, want, I, want, I want people to turn down the noise and say, hush, hush, somebody's calling my name. Sounds like Jesus. Calling the, that's the name you want on the lips of Jesus. Your name saying, save it! Well done. Well done. These officers are standing. They're standing because when the invitation is given, there's some people's hearts that are moved. But when you want to do good, evil shows up. Is that right? And you get in your car and say, I wish I had. And the truth of the matter is, you might, none of us may not make it back next Sunday. Amen. Not even tomorrow or even tonight is not promised to us. But right now, while the blood yet runs warm in your veins, if you don't know Jesus for yourself in the pardoning of your sins, I suggest and encourage you to get to know him. You know, every once in a while, I go out with some people who got long money. Amen. Amen. People like Brother Aaron Hackett there. Long money. Long money. And, and we go to a restaurant and they say, get whatever you want. Lord have mercy. I, 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 I want to say, I want to say, you talking to me? Do you understand the words that are coming out of your mouth? You say, get whatever I want. I want one of them. I want one of them. Two of those. But one of these days, this life as we know it is going to come to an end and your good looks nor your good deeds will be enough to get you to the other side. But I got good news. The bill has already been paid. <laughs> Bless his holy name. So if you don't know him, if you don't have a church home, We'd love to have you here. Isn't that right, Shallow? Amen. Shallow is a collection, a hodgepodge of imperfect people, starting with me. Amen. But it's a good place to come because all them imperfect too. Right, wait a minute. Mary said amen. All right, if you're perfect, stand on your feet and let me tell you, you're a liar and the truth ain't in you. All of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But the good news is that God hates sin, but God loves sinners. You ought to shout right there. Hallelujah. But these people are standing because whenever you decide to do something for the Lord, Satan always starts whispering, you know whispering, trying to get you to do something else. And sometimes he doesn't say no, he just says, don't do it right now. But he's saying, come to me while you have the chance, while the blood yet runs warm in your veins.
Amen. Amen. We've done as the Lord has asked, and still there's room at the cross for you and you and yes, even you. Amen. Got a lot going on today. You need to stay around today. Stay around today because we, we got a lot of great activities going on. I want to salute Brother Joel Griffin and his lovely wife Jennifer because the class they're giving can literally save our lives. We can be in church. I could be up here preaching and fall out. Hope that doesn't happen to me. I hope it doesn't happen to you. But somebody can save our lives if they know what to do. Amen. And when these events happen, seconds are precious. And you need somebody before the, uh, uh, the ambulance gets here to do something to try to keep you going. Joel and Jennifer lost their beautiful 12-year-old daughter because nobody knew what to do. That's a pain. But they'll carry with them all of their days. But I, I love you, Joel and Jennifer, because all of us have gone through pain, right? Their example is what we should follow. Turn our pain into a game. You, oh, Lord, y'all missed that. When you have those kind of cataclysmic events that happen in your life, that is the, the natural response to be a turtle and pull your head back in the shell and never come out. Thank you, Joel and Jennifer, for not doing that. Amen. That's why it's vital, that's why it's important that somebody, some of us go to that class, amen. Cause the life you save just might be your own, amen. All right, do that. Then we got Super Bowl activities. They got sliders down there, uh, amen. They got all kinds of food and goodies down there. I'm, I'm going to the front of the line. I've been working up here and I'm, I'm hungry. So. Uh, somebody else get a benediction. I'm going to get in line now. No. <laughs> so, and I appreciate that because church ought not just be just church. It ought to be encompassing of the whole human being. That's why I, I, I thank Dr. Batts for having us last week. Was that last week? Two, a week before last uh, in the grief class. Amen. And those of us who went there, we can say we were helped. Thank you, Dr. Bass. And there will be others to come. It ain't just about your soul going to heaven when you die. You got to take care of yourself while you're here. And we need all of that and more in order to make that happen. Amen. All right, let's get ready to go down. Those sliders are waiting for me. You get a bit of addiction. No, no, I'm just, I, I got, I got. It. Let us stand. All hearts and minds clear. That's it. We're good. Thank you. Good to see Doc. Good alpha man up there. Uh, Brother Haston, Amen. God bless you. Uh, are you a model? Cause you come immaculately dressed, man. I, I need to know who your tailor is, man. I, <laughs> amen. I, I, I take a three X, Doc. <laughs> A lot more material, but I'm a, I'm a better billboard. See, I'm bigger. I can see it from miles around. Amen. God bless you, AV team. Thank you. Give them some love. Our wonderful ushers, give them some love. People in the back who counting all that money you brought in today, praise the Lord. Give them some love. This magnificent choir and this band, amen. Get a drama song. <laughs> amen. And God bless you, God keep you. It takes all of us, it takes all of us. I don't take Sundays off. Even when I'm not here, I'm at church somewhere. If you are a leader, don't slack on the Lord, especially on the Lord's day. 
Amen. I know we got some things to do sometime, but but uh, if I see you at the restaurant after church, I wonder where were you and why you didn't come to church. <laughs> Amen. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. Is that everything? Huh? What? Oh, the Boy Scouts, amen. I, I use them a lot in the sermon, but give them some more love, amen. Is that everybody? I mean, is that everybody? All right, you know, every, everybody is different from everybody. And so you gotta, you, gotta have, you gotta be bilingual, amen. You gotta learn to speak and know where to speak and how to speak in various venues, amen. Everybody good? Well, bless the food. Oh, bless the food. Amen. I praise his holy name. All right. Uh, Deacon John, would you come up here? Look at all uh, slick and sleek and wonderful. <laughs> Amen. Look at smooth and suave in the other hand. Would you give us the blessing and the, and the benediction? Just praise God. Okay. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this day, Father. We thank you, Father, for what we heard today, Father, what we've seen today, Father. We thank you, Father, for all of those that were involved in this service, Father. We thank you for your presence, Father. Father, we thank you for the, the food that we're about to receive from you, Father. We ask your blessings upon the hands that prepared it, Father, and upon the, those that will consume it. As we go down here from here, Father, grant us safe traveling mercies to our homes, for we love you and we thank you. These and all blessings we pray in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Thank you for being ready, boy. Thank you.